How's it going guys? On to episode 22 of Ruthless Solo Southbound Forbidden Sanctum League. And today, leveling a new character. Gonna be a Blight, Vol Blight, Occultist. Testing it out, seeing what happens. I'm not personally expecting it to be a super great build. I've never really liked any other channeling skill that I've played. With the exception of Flame Blast, because mainly it had some really fun Frostblink tech you could do with it. But I played Blade Flurry, I played Incinerate, I didn't like either of those. I think this is going to fall into the same kind of wheelhouse. I can take Blight here, but I do have a Vol Blight, so we'll use that one. Grab a Raised Zombie just because. Alright, we need to gear up here. We get some Wanderlust, Ramblejack, grab this Life Sprig, make this Life Sprig. Hopefully three link. There we go. Throw the Vol Blight in. Ooh, I can actually use this Chrysalis Talisman. 23% increased spell damage. Okay, I guess. Alright, so what do we got here? Yep. Channeling skill, like the damage stacks up. Hey, I got enough for a Vol Blight. Let's find a group of enemies here. Here we go, Vol Blight. Pretty cool. Probably gonna be slow going until we get to Essence Trade for single target, get Malevolence and Despair in the mix. The Hinder right off the bat's pretty cool. And it's gonna need more cast speed to get the max stacks ramped up, it looks like. I'm instinctively like wanting it to do an additional pulse like an incinerator or blade flurry it's gonna take some getting used to better just to keep holding it down and get more stacks down i don't know how much we're gonna be able to do on the passive tree with increased duration i feel like i at least have to get the potency of will finally got a blight level oh yeah instantly noticeable damage increase and we get to do another vol blight haha apparently we have 0.28 attacks per second or cast time on it like 2.5 duration divided by 0.28 so i could almost get nine stacks of the debuff up if i were to channel it on an energy for 2.5 seconds so we need to double the cast speed or increase the duration or a mixture of both so that we can get that peak of 20 layers of blight damage hardly can give me a contagion i mean i can use it for now just to stack it as something else i mean it's damage is already just way less than the blight actually it's about the same i was looking at the vol blight vol blight did not do much to that guy so prison is where i normally get void manipulation i think means we can take that add it into the mix finally we're getting to some increased area effect that should make this feel better all right brutus should be fun here vol blight blight and then let him hit himself and there we go here i can take wither clarity and summon skeletons i think i need to take wither here i have a spell totem for that and i have a clarity oh i had a wither as well well i have a clarity from before level 12 i can replace the contagion with essence strain I have that for single target what do i get here I have the essence strain. Could bring another essence strain to corrupt. Nothing else I need here. Let's do that. Murveil time. Essence strain, ball blight, and then blight. How long is my essence strain? 3.8. Okay, so not long. Round two. Like the damage is pretty solid. Stop these squids in their tracks with the hinder. AoE is feeling better and it did gain a radius on a level. So it is going to continue to scale. Oh, look at that. Hit some chaos dot multi. Sure. And grab a desecrate here just because I don't have one. 5% mana per second is intriguing here, but I think I'm going to kill Alira. Spells cause you to gain mana equal to their upfront cost every fifth time that you pay it. So technically with this, that's 20% less mana cost, I think. But I got a lot of cast speed here. Now working over to Acrimony. Oh, wow. Remove elemental ailments when you cast a curse spell. That's pretty cool. Now the real question here is, do we help Kraten? 6% movement speed, 6% cast speed. I'm not gonna have much opportunity to grab the speed, so I think we help Kraten. I don't even remember when the last time was I've done that. Weaver. That was physical damage, so Bramblejack is still putting in work. I can put Control Destruction in place of my Essence Strain. More damage out of the Blight. And then I need to blink the bl Essence Strain with Vicious Projectiles. Ah, oh, you can't do it. Wait a minute. Really? This only works with attacks. Hmm. Okay, 15% increased skill effect duration of mastery for damage over time. Well, I planned out of the initial skill tree. Now, that jumps us to... 2.88 seconds 
with a 0.22 cast time. So now the max stacks that I can theoretically reach is 13. All right, Vol. Don't waste the Vol Blight on the initial phase. All right, yeah, now we can Vol Blight. Oh, should have let him hit me with that. He would have taken a lot of reflected damage. I might have died because I have specked into no life on the passive tree yet. Oh, we can do another Vol Blight. Yeah. All right, Vol down. It's going pretty nicely so far. I can now put on Despair and Malevolence. And when I'm here, do I get the Temp Chains or do I get Enfeeb? Other effects on cursed enemies expire 40% slower. It could be really huge. Uh, or do I get... Bane here. My curses have less effect. I have a Tim Chains. So I take a Bane and try and keep all these leveled. Maybe this guy I can test. I want to curse with Tim Chains, hit with one of these. I don't know if I hit it. I think it does. I think that Blight lasted like six seconds because of the Tim Chains. I need to take this Bramblejack off. Ah, no. I just want Tim Chains curse. Three, four, Five. I think it, I think it for sure is working because light puts this little purpley debuff on the enemy. Kind of see it, kind of like a little purple flame on them. And it definitely lasts longer than three point one three seconds on Aurelius with the Tim Chains. So we might not actually be forced into duration scaling because Tim Chains is actually kind of insane. Plus two to level of all cursed skill gems. Interesting. Piety time. Drop a Wither Totem. Curse. Essence Drain. Vol Blight and then Blight. Just keep holding it in. Come on. Oh, no, no. Don't you, Blighty. Die, please. Okay. Ooh, what do we get here? Remation Soul Rend. I could bring the Soul Rend in now. Hex Blast. Deals chaos damage to a single enemy, dealing more damage if they are hexed, then removing the hex. If the enemy was hexed, also deals area damage to other enemies around the target, boosting damage and removing hexes from those enemies in the same way. Chaos damage is resisted by lowest resistance. All damage can ignite freeze and shock. Interesting. Summon Reaper, Eye of Winter, Lightning Conduit. I still don't even know what the skill does either. Lightning strikes all shocked enemies around a targeted location, then removes shock from those enemies. Shocks cannot expire on enemies in range while casting the spell. Hmm. Okay, well there we go. Some extra AoE. Massive Shrine. Emperor's Vault. An elk. All of the conduits, all of the portals. Uh, gotta take it slow. Definitely not res capped, so not in the best situation here. Oh, okay, we'll run in here and vol blight, and hopefully it takes out a lot of stuff. Another vol blight. Yeah, get him. There we go. Okay, three keys. That's it. That is all of the items that were dropped. So then we take a cultist, and then what first? I've been thinking about unholy authority then i could as soon as i get over here to whispers of doom then i could go triple curse with enfeeble but i think i'll make it over there soon enough so i'll probably just go ahead and start with void beacon into the withering presence and then we'll pass on profane bloom i guess um and it's time Voblite. ah we don't have capped reds slowly but surely hitting it I don't have corrupting blood immunity, so almost another blight level. I'll make sure I use essence strain here. <laughs> that bramble jack's still working. There we go. The chicken. Oh, he's a more damage to itself. Oh, that's nice. A ring that I can throw on. Close. All of, all above 60 on the resists. Level 38. Got whispers of doom. I can put on my stygian vice. I wonder if a vol blight will take out this guy. I'll group up as much stuff as possible and hit it. Oh, come. Did I animation cancel it? Come on. I don't really have anything to animation cancel it with. Okay, let's try this again. There, yeah, he died. Now I need to find a way to get blue, blue, green linked outside of the blight. This chest would probably work. Now, okay. all energy shield. No, 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 no. I need to put three dragons on. 29 all res. Then I put temp chains in here with despair and bane. Awesome. I'm well over resist cap now. Einhar wanted to be an arena fighter. Maybe. Is he going to do anything, Einhar? Oh, Einhar is not doing much. I think my Bane has done more damage to Dresso than Einhar. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll hit it with the Wither. Now, I wonder if I can stack, I'm stacking Wither here. Oh no, kind of just melted the whole face. Uh, can stack Wither while he's down. Oh, Blight, get wrecked. It's really easy to stand and just like spam down Blight till enemies are dead. But 
it has like a three second duration on it so you can just kind of leave them to fester with it but getting the exact timing right to know how you can quickly like move through stuff it's gonna take practice and it's gonna change as gear is upgrading it's interesting Oh yeah, gym level, so just changes everything that I've got. With enough duration scaling, it's really possible I could just one-tap things with the Blight. Oh, Blight! Do a lot to clear a screen of enemies. Hydra Sphere, Frost Shield, Void Sphere, Sigil of Power. I think I'm taking a Chaos Golem here. Nice. I have Steel Skin. That will allow me to deal with Bleed as I go through here. I really should get the Arcane Surge off of Juggernaut. Well, we're already to the point that Bane can take out White Packs on its own. And that's just much faster than Blight. IT. Va Blight. Clear it. No, I did not clear the room. Oh, yeah, most groups of smaller enemies. Bane, dead. Damage in here is super solid. It ramps so nicely. I don't know how to do the calculations anymore on my Blight stacks with the Temp Chains factored in. And then you also have to factor in Curse Effect to that. There's definitely potential here. Blight has potential to do an absurd amount of damage once it gets ramped up and if you have the duration it's just going to drain them oh 42 that means the winter heart goes on not be chilled also should be enough dex to throw on a swift affliction to the essence strain really don't use it much i don't feel like it does anything but it's also not linked to anything 30 life two percent cast speed that'll work the more i play around with this the more i'm liking it i just charged up all that damage and boss just still taking that damage good stuff i'm using the replica ambus now so i'm losing life if i've gotten hit recently it's kind of a pain i think i do need to go duration scaling i just got atrophy my thoughts were i can push to growth and decay get that life regen will help survive but then next push towards corruption increased effect of withered which is going to be really nice once i get withering presence now that's going to be a bunch more damage right here are nodes that give staff spell and attack block getting back defense also push down here get some spell block there grab amplify maybe some extra life on the way to glancing blows there's more staff block here if i needed it then we'd be pretty tanky then we can just watch it die i think that was enough yeah very cool you have a lot of control over what you're doing with the dot and then further duration scaling means i might be able to hit the 20 stacks but kite and move at the same time and i also could slap an arctic armor on here to bolster myself when i'm channeling physical damage is what this character is going to be weak against so arctic armor would help against that regenerate two percent of life while moving that will solve the life drain issue luckily it's really easy to hit katava with essence drain i don't want to really worry about it but really like three stacks of my blight is doing more than essence drain unlinked there we go Kava down Resists. We're gonna be just fine. Level 47. Need 60 for the staff. Next thing I need to do is the library quest. Okay, so here, definitely need an enfeeble. That's one of the two. I don't know if there's anything else I need, so I guess I just save the other gemstone. i throw in the arctic armor here. Seems like I'm fine on mana. Now I can replace these boots. I need level 52 because I anointed these or enchanted them. Ah, oh, there it is. I felt like my damage was really bad, and then sure enough, there comes the gem level. Not till after Tukahama though, I guess. The longer I stand here, the more it ramps. It's Crazy. Easy peasy. I take less fire damage. Just, I hope that's how this turns out. If I get good block and glancing blows, and then I curse with enfeeble, I'm cursing with temp chains, I'm slowing them. I standing still, I take less physical and fire damage. Might be able to make this fairly tanky. Three passive points, quick recovery that I'm working down towards. Potency of will. This boots can now go on. Probably the big rarity ring as well. Puts me a little under on the lightning, but that comes on the gloves. At 57. 109 rarity. Brian King, what you got? This still gets the phase on me. I probably had enough stacks on him to that I would have drained him all the way down had it let me. I hope this damage carries like into maps because if it does, this is going to work. This is going to be the best thing that we have by far. It plays a lot like the Reap, but unlike the Reap, I hold down and 
then move when necessary. Because with the reap, I feel like I constantly have to stutter step move. Another ball blight. Get him. The ball orb. All right, now I'm going to take a nap. I am like not all here. All right, that's better. Fixed a bug where curses could be applied to dead enemies when applied through cast on melee kill or cast on critical strike. Okay, small little patch. Ball blight. I love it. I, I wind up with completely surrounded by enemies and i know it's going to be a pain to like pick them all off with the blight the vault blight will just delete an entire screen of normal enemies summon skitter bots Ooh, that's cool oh blight i love that my damage feels pretty good right here and i'm about to do cruel lab and it's gonna get even better there's potency of will blight debuff is up to 4.63 seconds it might be a little bit excessive <laughs> then i can get 10 percent more skill effect duration on top 5.09 before temp chains so i might be able to get away with swift affliction on this i'm actually curious what do i need for this i can get 115 strength 94 dex that's not bad this will give me endurance charges and onslaught maybe i'm gonna take shaper here for the life regen good push towards constitution but i think I think now's the time I should start pushing up towards corruption. Probably gonna have to respec this section of the tree at some point and then kind of swap it over here for this area. It's the only way I'm gonna get to glancing blows. I think I'm gonna run out of passive points. Wield swords and conduits again. Damage is really good. I'm just gonna not deal with this. Here goes Zaro. Nothing there. Chance to shock freeze ignite. Trigger edict of reflection. Um hmm. you know what I think I will. And then now we get withering presence. Nearby hindered enemies steal reduced damage over time. Every second inflict withered for 50 15 seconds before duration scaling. So if I stay near an enemy for 15 seconds, it's going to take 90% increased chaos damage before stacking wither effect. This is also where the wither totem definitely comes out. We have wither going another way, but grab a decoy totem to replace it. I don't think I want to do that just yet. We'll see how things go. I have an enduring cry though. That I'll use. New helmet can go on. Another 20 rarity here. Resists are still fine. Come on. Yep. Easy, Ark, Ali. Now I'm just gonna not die. Wow. Four rare items. The possibilities when you have 129 rare. Hey, I'm gonna get that decoy totem. Gonna have to level this thing because it just instantly dies. Yeah, three stacks of delirium. Something. It's really nice. You can just herd a bunch of trash enemies together and then vol blight them and they all fall over. <laughs> Eight passive chaos damage. Level 55 though. That's bad and eight passive minion damage go dre get wrecked what's this we got a dancing dervish gives you rampage melee hits count as rampage kills very fast attacking two-handed sword and it minerals on the damage Trigger level 15 manifest dancing dervishes on rampage manifested dancing dervishes disables both weapon slots hmm. i have no idea what that does Ooh, that's level 60 means it's time to put on the staff all right i need strength that was not enough strength really i'm one strength off Ooh, i know beef here we go oh we can also slap this in no nope, i need the decks off of this lovely so now i need to color this so that i can get essence strain in here with void manipulation controlled destruction and i think swift of Affliction, maybe. Ideally, I'd put efficacy in there. So the hard part of this is going to be coloring it because it's going to default to red and blue. Well, mm, I have a bunch of pinpoints. I want to see here if I can do some gym gambling. There's a bunch of predators in here too. Cast when stunned can go. There's a couple lightning pins in here. We'll keep the cast on stun. Two gym gambles. And we get light damage, minion life. Okay, minion life is cool though. I could put decay in there. So decay is on hit though. Uh, Blight doesn't hit. Try one more of these. Another control destruction. Okay, that goes on the Bane. That works. Plan wasn't necessarily to have another six link or another five link here. I'll go get the Arcane Surge and put that there, I think. Or that should be fine. The Oscolum gains levels now. Something else I want to do. Well, I have this five link. Slap on a spell cascade. So now my Bane can hit off screen. I target it correctly and hit a lot more enemies at once. And since its main goal is to apply the curse, not really do the damage, I think that's a solid play. I think eventually it's just going to be in a four link with an enfeeble. But for now, curse and vol blight. Ooh, gonna take the increased effect of Withered Mastery. Now I have 55% increased effect of Wither, so each stack of Withered now applies 
9% increased chaos damage taken. I can stack 15 times that I apply automatically every second. Can't see the number of withers on an enemy, but I like it. Let's me use a decoy totem instead of a wither totem, which really frees up gym sockets more than anything else. I never realized this before. Tolman still is on the minimap here after we've killed him. So maybe his ashes are in this jar. Maybe she tells you that. I've never paid attention. I got four passive points I can throw in now. I need to start being really careful about what I do with them. I definitely think I need enigmatic defense. That would get me up to 26 block, 29 if I take the side. Go ahead and get that. Oh, I need to anoint Whirling Barrier. Crimson, Teal, Amber. So if with Whirling Barrier, I'm pretty much there on attack block. And then I just push down here and get Safeguard. And I should be there on spell block for Glancing Blows. And then if I anoint this, then I could easily access this from the bottom without having to try and work something through here to get across Devotion. Doing that would kind of prevent me from anointing Wasting, but Wasting is also really expensive with two silvers. I guess let's start pushing through here. This will fix the strength and will allow me to anoint that. And I do have the oils to anoint that. This character is not going to be as fast, but this character is going to have damage and I'm going to find stuff on this character because 129 rarity is definitely not a bad thing. Uh, Tim Chains is capped because of dexterity now. I just need level 70 so I can put my gloves on. That'll fix the dex issues. 6% carrion golem. Okay, so there's two rare items on the ground here. This is all rare items and one chrome item. That was from walking from the Lunar's Concourse Waypoint through to Luna Lunar's 2 with this much rarity. Oh, well, this should be pretty easy. It's a recurse every time it looks like. Yeah, so something really cool about Ruthless. If I was playing in SSF Sanctum, like I probably wouldn't even be getting excited when Divine Orb is dropped with this much time investment and like it's still super hype when I see a chaos. At this level, I grab decks. I might have to create minimap icons for rare items with this build if things are going to be dying as much as they are off screen because I just keep running past stuff after I blight them. Oh, the decoy totem. So good. Until it dies, but I am a fan. I think that was a really good choice for this build. Molten Shell. I can damage this enemy without having to penetrate the shell. Maybe that's just a chaos damage thing, but those have been a pain on the... Cyclone. I'm trying to see something here. If I curse and hit with Essence Strain, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, like twelve seconds. And this says 7.86, so that the temp change is working really well there, too. Get him. Oh, I don't know if it's possible to get this boss before it phases. I've never done it or seen it done in the acts but i was piling some damage on see here it is i knew it this says ahuana drops an additional unique item that is disabled in ruthless so it's only like a text display thing but i went in there expecting it because of this i wonder if in a boss like this when the boss like wants to go up and do its flying around thing is it losing its wither stacks like is it keeping the duration i don't know there's no way to like see the wither stacks so we really don't know into glancing blows now so we can see what happened here i got 52 percent chance lock attacked damage only 18 on the spell so if i anoint this that's plus 12 on the attack block plus 12 on the spell block that gets me up to 30 hmm there's a staff mastery that recovers two percent of life when you block attack damage that's pretty crazy there's 13 attack block on the way to steelwood stance that would get me capped on the attack block and that would let me have the staff mastery where else are staff things these are staff nodes crit chance ellie pin area of effect for power charge Hello. 10% cast speed here. That, if I got this, that would give me access to the staff mastery without me having to push into these nodes. And then I can just anoint Whirling Barrier. I'm not going to commit to the anoint yet. Maybe there's something better that I don't see, but I think that is probably the best play. The big reason I'm hesitant is I can't mess it up. If I if I mess up my passive tree, it's pretty much make it reroll a new character. Like I have a few respects here and there, but first character to enter Finimus's lair. I guess not a lot of people have been messing with Bestiary. There goes Marius. Look at that. It just keeps ramping and poof. Ooh, life lightning res jewel. That one's nice. I'll, I'll take that. Sure. What the heck is this maze thing? There's timed cranks, switches. I don't know if I've ever seen this. Okay, so I have to time crank. Is there some other way to go here? Cause how have I never seen this? Wow, another blight level. Gets it to 16. I put skill points into Mystic Bulwark. Gonna give me a bunch of mana regen, some more spell block. It's got me at 34% chance to take, 
20% less damage from spells. And yeah, I got a blight level between this fight and the last one, so... Alright, Merclab done. Maybe a chance orb. Summon holy relics have buff effect movement speed if you haven't been hit recently. Yep, I'm changing that annoying. And then now, playing with profane bloom would be fun. It would let me curse things with bane and then those enemies explode. But I think we need to go for the additional curse. Curse hexproof enemies and then we swap in feeble onto the bane. Final fight. Finally made it. I normally dislike leveling new characters because I just don't like playing through the story, being all slow and whatnot. This time has been much better because we had support gyms and we had gear and things have gone, but no movement skills through the story. Like, ah. Uh, adds hours to this. I am having a good time playing with the character though. I'm excited to play with it in maps and mess with this crazy rarity that we're gonna have. Single target damage potential on this seems crazy. Like, I, I'm killing stuff all the time just using Blight. The Vol Blight's more for just memes, really. Clearing a full screen of enemies because Blight can't do that. Uh, the Essence Drain is worth about five stacks of my Blight, so a max ramped up Blight gives me four times the amount of damage that Essence Drain does. But Essence Strain does stack on top, and it lasts way longer. Alright, there we go. Alright, now resists are no longer capped, I think. And we've made it home, back into the void of space. Two passive points. So if I need to, having Mystic Bulwark, I can get Clarity Manor Reservation Efficiency there. I stopped loving Clarity a long time ago and haven't had issues. Only level 3. I thought I was going to run into some serious issues with the Blight. But we're also only four linked on it, so we don't know what's going to happen there. Two points gets me to this node, which gets me more spell block here. Eight all res and ES recovery when I block spell damage. Also access to more life ES. Two points can get me constitution right here for tireless. There's lots of life there. And we're right off for two jewel sockets. There's a lot here. And then I am half a level. No, only level 69. Okay, so I can put my gloves on. Need level 70 for the chain hook. We'll get that worked in next time. But these are my new gloves. Resists kept. Just as we planned. And the damage is fine. If the damage starts falling off, we get gem levels. And then we just make the character super tanky at this point, I think, is the play. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 points. That gets me to level 84. That's doable. Like 86 with the jewel sockets, tons of life, good spell block, and then we anoint this whirling barrier. I think that's the play. So we shall do that next time. So that's all I've got for today. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely hit the like button as it really helps the channel out a lot. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss more videos from me. If you'd like to help support my channel, please consider using the super thanks to the heart icon just below the video or by joining to become a member. And I'll see you all in the next one.